on this trip. Today we're going to do an experiment. Yeah. Claim the lab radar. Here at the lab radar shooting spot that you've seen at the, on the hunting public videos and all that stuff and that's chris out there walking back and forth he's going to be my shooter today we're going to shoot uh two blades versus three blades and we'll get the launch velocity and then we'll get the 60 yard velocity I'm theorizing here I'm theorizing here I'm theorizing here that the three blade broadheads will drag more at distance which means they will drop more if you shoot them that far. Note to you, this is not a brand thing. This is not a brand thing. This is not a brand thing. And then if the goal of this video is for you to know this, so if you're shooting really far with a certain broadhead and it's hitting low, maybe it's aerodynamics and physics and you can't beat that. Gravity and all that. Facts are stubborn things. You've seen Chris before. He's famous for being the only person who's ever shot anything on video with a tough head evolution. You were the first, and I've never seen it done again. So congrats <laughs> to you. You cut the spine in half. And he's going to be my shooter today. So you have to shoot within about a foot of the lab radar. The pig's out there. That's 70 yards. You don't need to hit the target. We got it out there for fun. And Chris, of course, is going to die. He's dying to hit the target perfectly every time. Who wouldn't? We just needed to fly through the radar. The radar is set at 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 yards. And I'm only gonna mine the data from zero and 60 for this video. He did a field point shot, 650 grains, 200 grain point. We're gonna shoot lighter points than that. 229 at launch, 208 at 60 yards. And then we're now we're gonna start shooting broadheads. Circos with uh, broadheads. I don't have the brands and stuff on there. I don't really care. Some of them are single bevel, some of them are double bevel. You're kind of going to have to get over that because I tried. I got a lot of broadheads. I didn't get it completely perfect here, but I got a three blade and a two blade. We're just looking for drag three blade versus two blade. And we're just going to look at what the results are. So for you idiots out there who are going to put up comments about, well, you should have made sure they were all double bevel. That and, made, and you're going to start getting into your belly button lint and telling me how I did this wrong. Just get a lab radar. Get a Chris Griego to shoot your bow for you. Go 70 yards out, set the thing up, and do the test and see if the results are different. And we can share this information. It is not a freaking fist fight, idiots. So anyway, that's my short comments and my brutal bluntness that's pretty common on my channel. Here, I will show you the broadheads, and y'all are going to be able to figure out the brands. Get your, because you're pretty smart. God, don't bash any brands, knucklehead. Don't bash any brands, knucklehead. Don't bash any brands, knucklehead. All right, here's my 125 platform, three blade, 150, 200. That says 225, but with the insert, it's 300, and then the 300 grain, three blade. So we've got, Two blades and three blades, and we're going to shoot them like this and just get the speeds. There may be no results, and they shoot the same. We don't know yet. At the uh, three blade, 243 and 210 at 60 yards. 125 grain three blade. And we're going to send the uh, two blade here in just a second. Hit the target. Same launch speed, 243. But that one is 215 at 60. Let me double check my notes. Yep, launch speed was the same, 243 and 210. But the two blade, even with bleeders, is 215 at 60. Whew. So that design's a lot more open than that solid three blade. Maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, theoretically, Chris, we're going to see that the whole time. Yeah. Theoretically, the platform, the three blade platform has more drag. That's right. what, all we're talking about. Right. It's just aerodynamics. We may be, hell, one of them may surprise us. We don't know. That's why you do this stuff. 
Hey, get your exercise there, buddy. Don't pull a hammy. Hit this damn thing. 150 grain three blade. Hit it. All right, as we would expect, a little slower off the launch, 238, 212. 150 grain. They hit him where you were aiming. Like you were... No, I pulled it left. Oh. It's in his neck. Are we on line? Yeah, we're good. Dang. 237. 211. All right, 200 grain three blade. Good launch, 229. 205. And you hit the target, Chris. Yeah, that's unbelievable, honestly. You just keep changing weights and you keep bombing. You're that good, Chris. I'm that lucky. <laughs> we'll take that. Yeah. All right, it's armed. You're good. It's got two and a half minutes or something. All right. 200 grain, two blade. Keeps hitting meat. 228, 206. Absolutely not showing much difference, which is interesting. That arrow weighs uh, 650 grains, so... Out how to. <laughs> Chris is having some trouble here because we just went to 715 grains. We added 100 grains, and he's very concerned about hitting the target. Maybe you shouldn't worry about hitting the target. Yeah, I got to aim at the moon for this one. Yeah, but it's devastating. But it's a full moon. Today. It's a full moon today. Yes. All right. 300 grain three blade, 720 or something. It's. Uh... Oh, foam! 213. 194. Look at you. You ate your Wheaties today and killed the turkey. Everyone gets lucky every now and then. <laughs> All right. Final shot of the day, and then Chris can stop doing this craziness. Whoops, sorry. 300 grain. Aim at the moon. Aim at the moon, buddy. Oh, the foam. In the head. Nice. 214. 192. All right. Okay, so I don't know. It wasn't as conclusive as I expected. Uh, this is why you test things and don't sit around pulling lint out of your belly button, hollering at your mom in the basement to bring you more Cheetos, and then put stupid comments out there and say, well, I think that this could have happened. <clears throat> The more I do this, the more I learn. Don't guess. You can sit there and joke around with each other and make a bet and say, well, I think this is going to happen. Now, I thought we were going to see the three blade broadheads across all platforms really slow down more. And we did not see that uh, to a significant level. The highest difference was five feet per second, as you see in the slide here, or at least the spreadsheet. So that was... Interesting. Now, what I should have done, this is always one of these things, hindsight is twenty twenty. I should have shot field point broadheads. And that would have given us a different drag, theoretically a different drag coefficient because the field point is more aerodynamic than the broadhead platforms all around. Okay, well, should have thought of that. Man, well, we got the test done, and those boys wanted to shoot turkeys, so, you know, whatever. I guess that's more videos. <laughs> make a mistake, make more videos. Okay, see how that works. So I was once again surprised. You may want to go back and, and freeze the uh, screen and look at that spreadsheet just so you can get your head around, you know, where the three and the two blade and everything. I'm not going to sit here and drain the slide. I know I could extend my video and... You could view time. I just don't care about that stuff. The facts are there. Freeze your phone or whatever you're looking at and look at the graph. Now, one thing that I want you to think about, and I'm going to start talking about this a lot uh, more in all my videos, is the downrange energy delivery 
and then start pondering how efficient your broadhead platforms are. And I wanna see what the delivered velocities are on meat, because that's all we're talking about is bow hunting. I couldn't care less about shooting a damn target. If it, They've got cameras in the Olympics, I understand, so that they bounce off. <laughs> They still know where they hit. That is sad. Anyway, what we're talking about is delivering a broadhead at 60 yards onto meat, and most of you Western guys are shooting bigger stuff. And we need to conserve all of the energy we possibly can. I show the difference in the speed, and then here I circled the two, and I sh it showed the, the 60 yards velocity in feet per second at impact, theoretically you're shooting 60 perfect yards at a perfectly broadside animal it's not that big a difference between the two except the mass so then what i did was i have a very long video on this on kinetic energy at 60 yards it's in the description if you want to watch that but this is a screenshot or what i did was i put the momentum and the kinetic energy for a, this almost exactly the same arrow set with field points in this case. So they're a little more efficient, got that. You can see that the momentum and the kinetic energy are layered on top of each other and I had to adjust the mass so they would sit on the same graph. But nonetheless, they're going up. There's no denying that even with the velocity at launch reduction, which is pretty significant, the velocity retention at distance, the reduced amount of drag because the heavier projectile can carry through the atmosphere more efficiently than something moving very, very fast, just for your knowledge. Two times the velocity is four times the drag. That is a fact. Rocket guys know this, airplane people, and even the guys who race motorcycles and stuff know this, that the aerodynamics start to eat you alive the faster you go but you can overcome it with mass. That's a completely different thing. Flying airplanes and all that stuff, it's similar to us. Driving on the ground is different because got drag on the ground. But the arrows that are heavier in mass, if you look again at this screenshot, the kinetic energy values go up, the momentum values go up, very consistently as mass goes up and velocity is reducing, got that. So that means on meat at 60, there's more energy retained by the aero system when it hits the animal. Perfect flight, sharp broadheads, all that stuff. This is just this one component. And then beyond that, we have to consider how efficient your broadhead platform is. And that's be another message I'll be throwing out there this year. <laughs> Some of the some of the really popular broadheads actually publish on their websites kinetic energy requirements in the 40s. You've only got 80. And the studies I've done in low mass projectiles under 500 grains, which is real common, they launch at maybe 80 foot pounds for an average person. And they land at 53 to 60 and you're wasting 40 of it by the manufacturer's recommendation to punch through the chest wall. So let's just do some simple math here. If you're gonna shoot 60 yards with a super inefficient broadhead and a lighter arrow, it's gonna work both ways. It's, it's still gonna rob the energy whether the arrow weighs 1,000 grains or 400 grains, okay? And the published, <laughs> On websites, data says you need 40 foot-pounds of kinetic energy to deploy and possibly penetrate. I can't separate the two. I don't know if that's a deployment value or a penetration value. I think they're smart enough not to say it's going to penetrate. However, if you start, let's say you hit at 60, at 60 yards, you have 60 pounds of kinetic energy. And your broadhead requires 40 to deploy and do whatever to move forward. You have 20 foot pounds of kinetic energy left to continue moving forward in a target that is widely varied in density, what you're gonna hit, angle that the animal is, and if they're moving. Only 20. If you get a broadhead platform that's super efficient, more to come on that. I have a pressure meter here and we have one at the foundation. 
let's say it only uses 10 pounds of kinetic energy to punch through the chest wall. You're shooting 60. At 60 yards, it hits with 60 pounds of kinetic energy to keep things consistent. You have 50 foot pounds of kinetic energy to continue the projectile moving forward through the target. It's that simple. All right, more to come. Got some new toys coming out. <coughs> This is the Orion. There are serious Orion Ranch Ferry test kits now. Uh, also gonna have, this is the prototype of the Ranch Ferry three blade, one piece, 200 grain broadhead. Why on earth would the Ranch Ferry say to shoot a three blade? It's one piece. It's low angle of attack. And they're stupid easy to sharpen. So if you're gonna go from a Tinker Toy broadhead with a bunch of thin blades, and a bunch of washers holding everything together that'll look all shredded on impact and won't survive impact or you'll sh would be willing to try this as opposed to try to sharpen a two blade or a single bevel well yeah because that sum of gun right there is not going to break or bend don't send me dumb comments about bone and all that stuff got that i would recommend normal shot angles with a three blade but once again if you're shooting a tinker toy broadhead with your Lincoln log parts and your washers and everything. And you hit a bone. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, I'll bet on the one piece solid broadhead with low angle of attack that's super sharp and made out of solid steel and machined. I'll, uh, you know, I'll bet on that. Now, earlier this, in this little clip here, I said, don't make a guess. <laughs> well, I'm gonna guess that uh, the Tinker Toy might collapse. All right, that's the Ranch Ferry. Hit the subscribe button if you want to. Uh, it's America. SpongeBob's got the American flag right there. And uh, keep it going. And uh, don't forget to cry out your liberal tears. I gotta light this thing up. So if you're a liberal, I'm sorry. Late.